Ah, hello. Looks like I'm, looks like I'm live. Yeah. I think we're up and running. So, good morning or evening or whatever time of day it is, wherever you happen to be. For me, it's late afternoon stroke early evening. And it's noticeable now, um, it's only quarter past four, but already it's getting pretty dark outside. What is it now, the 17th of November? So I think we have perhaps um, another month, a month and a few days until we get to the winter solstice and the days start to get longer again. And I'm, I'm just waiting for that day, for longer days and more daylight. Um, just bringing up the stream here so I can check that it's all working okay. Um, please do let me know. Um, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. It's kind of bleached out by the light. Um, please do let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me okay. Orna from the Netherlands. Hello, good to see you. Hi, Dominique. Bruges. Mm. Hi, Tom. And hello, Rika. From Denmark. Wow. What time is it in Denmark? Sean, good to see you. Hello, George. George is on YouTube. I'm overexposed. I know I am a bit, aren't I? <laughs> That's someone who knows how to work a camera. Let me have a look. Oh dear, yes. <laughs> I'll be honest, I set up in a little bit of a rush today. This is going to become, I should be less overexposed, hopefully now, as it's going to become very obvious when I put the camera on the easel because I've got the wrong painting. So apologize, uh, apologies to anyone who was expecting a stream yesterday. Um, it wasn't that I wasn't up to streaming yesterday. It was simply that I just had a really busy day and just couldn't get to it. Hola, Liliana from España. Hello, Dorothy. Nice to see you. New Jersey. Cool. Hi, Susie. Susie in Houston, Texas. Already we've got people from several different countries, which is all very exciting and good. Okay, so this, um, you can see the reference photo there at the side of the screen. Nope. I always get that wrong because my, my monitor screen is reversed from what I see. Um, this is a, a photo of a rose that I grew. Um, and I think it's r really, really beautiful, but it's quite subtle. And the photo itself is quite subtle as well because we've got a lot of middle values in the rose and then a lightish to middle value background. And part of the challenge for this painting is um, how to make this work when the strongest value changes between the leaves in the background, when I want people to look at the rows. That's kind of what I've got in mind, what I'm thinking about as I look at this. Um, <clears throat> and the painting actually is here because I haven't set it up yet. And the last thing that I did with the painting, the last time I worked on it, if anything, um, I got the values even closer. So let me switch over to the camera on the easel and the one on the palette. And I'll make this reference image smaller. Let's do that first. Take this away. There we go. Oh, so this is the wrong painting. Obviously, you know, I would be having some serious problems if I'd done this painting from that reference photo. This is from... When did I work on this? Wednesday, I think. Wednesday's live stream. And this was a um, colour study for a piece that I'm working on for a client to commission. 
This painting here, which I'm about to stick up for you, is um, not for a client, has no particular, I started it without any particular direction in mind. You know, I was, like sometimes you start a painting and you know how you want it to look. Um, I had no idea with this one. Where should I put this? I'm gonna to need to zoom the camera in a bit and possibly refocus it. Um, it's smallish, it's eight by 10 inches. This is an ampersand gesso board panel and the painting has been, let's say, abused quite a lot. I've sanded it, I've used steel wool on it, all sorts. Let me get this camera a little bit set up. But sorry, I should have done this before I started really. Um, do indulge me if you don't mind whilst I just kind of get everything set up. See, I kind of, I like where this painting is going. In some ways, I kind of, I kind of like the, the slightly gentle kind of effect of the values being quite close, but it definitely needs, I think it needs a bit of, a bit more strength in the values. Is that in focus or not? Let me check my, let me check my focus and see. That's out of focus. There we go. I think that's. Let's take a minute to get this right, though. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Mm. Oh, you're an hour. You're an hour in front of me, then, Rika. I pronounced your name right. I hope so. Karen says you may want to push the light to your right out of the frame just a bit. Yeah, it's um, it's awkward because I want to have it close enough. I mean, presumably you can't see it now that it's on the easel. I like to have it close enough so that I, I make sure I've got good light on the easel. You know. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about where I'm going to start today. Let me get the, my reference image up in Photoshop and I'll, I'll have a, a bit of a think. Because I <clears throat> have a feeling I could just take this kind of to a finish now by refining it and, and maybe you know, in some ways, that's all I really need to do. Funny little aside, actually, by the way, funny little thing about streaming live is that every now and again, I get in front of the camera like this. And the reason I do that is because my camera now in this studio, which I've only been in for a couple of weeks, really, is over my right shoulder. And the camera used to be on my left shoulder. So I have this kind of nervous tick when I'm streaming live to, to remind myself to get out of the way of the camera. And I always move the wrong way. <laughs> because I'm used to the camera being on the other side. Anyway, let's get some paint out. Let's start moving some paint around. That's what we want to do. First, lead white. Probably not going to need a huge amount of paint out today because I, I kind of see this, who knows, maybe there's going to be some big changes. Maybe there won't be anything major. Ivory black. Raw umber. Um, let's have some. This is bright yellow lake. Anyone who's used to my streams will be familiar with me putting this out. It's a greenish yellow. Um, good for the lights in this rose, which are quite greenish yellow. Quinacridone rose because there's some in the background. Um, what else am I going to need? 
something orange for the shadows, push the shadows orange, so we'll have some transparent red oxide in the shadows. Low value high chroma orange. And I'm also going to put out, whether I'm going to need them or not, I'm not sure yet, I will put out some cad yellow, which is more orangey yellow. Yellow ochre. They all may not be useful. Probably won't need it, but you know, it's I've got it there in case I do. And the last thing I want is in case I do anything on the leaves today. I want a thallo green. Now this is Windsor and Newton Windsor green yellow shade. Just a thallo green. Anything else? Maybe some green gold? I think green gold pairs, in, especially in yellows, yellow subjects, it pairs really well down in the shadow areas with the transparent red oxide, because that means I can send the shadow more towards yellow or more towards orange if I want to. So from that point of view, it's useful. And there's something else I was thinking about putting out. <clears throat> really just to see how it works with what's already there it's Williamsburg quinacridone gold brown quinacridone even however you pronounce it probably more than more different colours than I'm really going to need there, but at least I've got a few out. <clears throat> Dominique says, if you would set your camera on the painting a little more to the right, you wouldn't block it with your head. Yeah, I know. The problem is it's up against the wall. Um, the thing is, I've only recently moved, moved into this house and set up in this studio and um, I kind of threw things up quickly and you know how it is, you, you throw things together and then it kind of works and, and you never get around to making the little improvements that are going to make it better. Um, I really do need to rearrange things a little bit, put some time aside and check camera angles and this and that. And I want to add another camera as well with close-ups. And I actually figured out the other day, <clears throat> I keep forgetting about it, but I figured out the other day how to use my mobile phone at the same time as a source, a camera source in my streaming software live, so I can bring that in as well. Which, you know, I mean, cameras on mobile phones are pretty good these days, so I could potentially bring like real close-ups of some things in. So that could be interesting to play with as well. Vivian, yes indeed, this is oils. Thank you, Julius. Oh, Brenda. She says, hi from the cold, dark, enveloped in sea fog north of Scotland. Wow. What part of Scotland, if you don't mind me asking, Brenda? I'm uh, very fond of, of Scotland. We used to have our family holidays in the northwest, like around um, Inverinit and the Kyle of Loch Alsh. And I love that area around there. Keep meaning to go back there. It's noon in Tennessee. That sounds like, you know, noon in Tennessee. Like I'd be imagining like cowboys in the street with guns and stuff. I imagine that doesn't happen very often. And someone with a, a watch playing a tune and then when the tune, you know, when the tune stops. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to shut up now. I'm always saying these terrible things. Near Inverness. Nice. Nice. Do you still get that horrible bread up there, Bermet's pemmican? Or can you get proper bread? I imagine you can get proper bread there now. <clears throat> 
The main thing I remember from our childhood holidays was didn't like the bread much. So uh, I can definitely go higher value here. That's going to bring things out a bit, and I can go lower value here and higher chroma there. So I, I, may, I may not play with the values too much. I was thinking about doing some sanding, but I don't think I'm going to do that because I think it's got plenty of texture, and I kind of like the background as it is. So what I'm going to do is just oil the whole surface out and start painting. I'm going to start on the rows. So a lot of the way that I find myself painting lately, I, I characterize as a push and a pull. Um, like I'm keen on moving away from the reference photo a little so that it's not too <clears throat> too close to it and, it and it gives me opportunities partly to make the painting process more interesting um, for me and also to try and bring some kind of uh, resonance to it, a deeper resonance and meaning. <clears throat> this has been standing for a while and probably begun to cure a little, so um, it's going to take a little bit of working over to get the oil to wet the surface properly. It's coming now. And immediately um, the chroma comes back because it's, it's been worked on in, in, in multiple layers already, this painting, so it is... Uh, a little sunken in. So now I can see it more clearly as it was when I left it last time. I brought in a little more chroma. So one of the main things that's striking me at the moment is I want to see, I think, a little more um, how the lights work the lightest parts of the rows. I think I'm going to need... I'm just going to have a bit of a stand back and look at this for a second and I'm also going to... going to send a copy of this the reference photo to my um, to the laptop that I have right next to me. On the easel. So that I can um, I can see it a little more closely. It's just going to take a second to upload and then I can open it on my laptop. There we go. Hi, Debbie. Ethereal is good. Ethereal is definitely good. That's, that's pretty much... I think it's fair to say that's pretty much what I'm going for here. Um, so I don't want to lose that. I want to bring more of the form in. I, it probably has enough t texture and, and life going on in it already, I kind of I feel. Um, So I'm going to work mostly around here to begin with and define this light area a little better. Um, probably, I mean, at least partly, just bring in more detail there and resolve it a little more. And, uh, and, then, and then see where we are then. So I think this is probably a pull, a pull session. So the reason I think about it as pull and push is push is, I think of that as when I'm pushing it away from the reference photo and trying to bring something else in, some more kind of visual interest or something. Um, uh, 
and pull is when I'm pulling it back to, you know, if I feel that I've perhaps pushed it a little bit too far. Um, and I feel the need to kind of, to pull it back, to, to bring some more of the, of the actual feeling of the rose, the actual form. I, I'm, I'm kind of chuntering and not painting yet because I'm still thinking about what I want to do with it. And I... Not really 100% sure yet. But you know, when in doubt, start painting and see what happens. Let's get a light value right in at the start. Lead white. <clears throat> We're going to go a small amount of Aralai Jello. So this is going to be the lightest values in the whole thing. Um, That'll be like about a value nine, something like that. I'm going to go in with a smallish brush. So this is a Rosemary's Angled Eclipse, quarter inch. I just want to see like how, how a, a very light value is going to look. And I'm also going to... Work a little more carefully in refining the shapes here. So that's like immediately a lot lighter than anything else that's on there. So I was probably my highest value at that point was probably like an eight or something. So I'm quite relieved about that because it means that I can begin to bring in a bit more variation of value. And that went on pretty translucent as well, so I can probably bring in even more than that if I want to. So what I've been doing a lot lately, what and I, I think I've always done this, but I, I'm perhaps doing it more more consciously lately is to try and make paintings that have um, a variation of finish in them. So some areas are left really like abstract and barely defined. I'm just softening the inside edge. And other areas are very carefully finished. And uh, there's something I really like about that, the feeling of paintings that are done that way. where you get this kind of quite compelling effect of the very finished parts, but there's still enough abstract interest in the rest of it and enough that, you know, the viewer, whether it be me or someone else looking at it, still the brain is still engaged in making up the parts of the image that aren't. Completely finished. I'm just trying to get these in the right shape. And then I'll start thinking about refining it with some shadow. I'm building actual forms. And I, the, if there's any bit usually in a painting that I'm going to try and, and finish more carefully, it'll be the light. You know, I like the shadow areas to be vague um, because that's kind of how, how, you know, I think it reflects pretty well how we see. I wonder if this is a little bit too green yellow. I don't think the hue is going to make too much difference, though, really. Small differences in hue.
just realized I don't have the chat up on my laptop here. Or at least I do, but I, I only have um, the YouTube one. So for anyone who's on Facebook, I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> it's just that I didn't, um, I haven't seen what you posted yet. Oh, I don't seem to be picking up any Facebook chat. That could be just because no one's watching on Facebook, or it could be because um, no one on Facebook has said anything yet. Let me check that I'm live on Facebook just to make sure that that's working. If you are watching on Facebook, please leave me a little message to let me know if you can see me. Facebook is a bit flaky, I find, so it might just be. Oh, no, we're there. Hello, Diane. Yeah, Diane and Linda said hi. Thank you very much. For some reason, um, the Facebook comments aren't being picked up, which is a little irritating, but it's kind of the way things are on Facebook sometimes. Oh, hi, Michelle. Yeah, Michelle, you might recognize this one from the rose color stories. I think it was one of the reference photos that we started working on afterwards, after the workshop. Hi, Judith. Judith, if you want to... Um, I usually send out an email, uh, probably not quickly enough, <laughs> not in not in advance enough of when I'm streaming, but I do I do actually send an email out. So if you want to find out when these live sessions are going to happen, I try to give an hour's notice. Today I think it was about fifteen minutes because just the way the day went. Um, but you can sub if you subscribe to my email list off my on my website there, then you will get emails when I'm about to go live. Hi, Sean, Atlanta, Georgia. Nice to see you. <laughs> Judy says, I understand the technical challenges of setting up the cameras, lights, doing a demo while watching the live chat. It is, yeah, I mean, it is. I take it you do a bit of live streaming as well, do you, Judy? It, I mean, it is, it's a fart on, frankly. Um, but you get, I found anyway, I've got more used to it with time. Hi, Susan. Sharon says, did you use linseed oil on the rub? Yes, linseed oil with a, a very small amount of pure gum terps in it. There is more direct light on the left side, I think, of the row. Do you mean of the row, the reference photo? Or do you mean, um, yeah, the reference photo, right? Yeah, I would agree. I think possibly, I think my my background value could go up a little. Uh, on the left hand side. I wonder if that would be a good thing. Feels like my. Let me try something. I've got some some new things to play with actually. Just recently. I got these just to, for things to try, you know, on the surface to make some more interest. So these are rubber rollers. I think they're they're made for printing. Looks like that could be interesting to play with. Um, and I got these two silicon paint shapers. Now, I like the look of these, more little rollers, but these are sponge rollers. So they'll have some texture to them. They're pretty cheaply made, but you get a little bag, you get like 10 of them. Uh, 
I'm actually tempted, maybe not today. I'll keep them on one side and um, oh, caught the mic there, sorry. Think about playing with them a little bit. But I'm, I'm actually wondering if bringing up the value of the background is going to be a good idea or not. I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to wait and see. Suzanne says, feels so high value. Do you mean, do you mean the lights that I just put on? Yeah. Yeah, um, everything else will need to be changed a little bit to suit. So I'm thinking about my extremes at the moment and making sure that I get the, what I want, in the, that there's enough, enough um, variation of chroma and value. <clears throat> but then sometimes, sometimes, um, you know, today I was looking at some of Emil Carlson's work and there's some incredibly beautiful paintings he's done where there's almost no hue, hue and chroma in them at all. And the value range is really, really close. And there's, I would say serene is the, is the word that strikes me. I would say they're serene more than anything else. Great, Judith. You will be hearing from me soon. <laughs> FP is indeed flaky. And yeah, a lot of other things. Borna says, I received a mail starting soon and it was pretty soon. It definitely was. <laughs> like I say, usually I try for an hour, but uh, didn't manage that this time. It was like five minutes. Hello? Someone just knocked on my door. So I want to bring up a little bit of chroma in that shadow area. This is that um, quinacridone gold brown, but that's going to be too. Too orange. And I don't want it to be silly. Mount Chroma. Let's bring some green gold in there. Swing it back towards green. Didn't really add an awful lot of chroma. But I wonder if I can start to add some of the lighter shadow areas that do have some chroma in. Where the light is actually coming through the shadow. It's really interesting color there. So I've got, what have I got here? Quinacridone gold brown, green gold, and I'm bringing up the value with the bright yellow, like the aralide yellow. So the, the chrome, it's keeping the chroma pretty high. I'm looking for these, a color that's going to work in these areas where the light is inside the rose and, uh, and um, kind of traveling through the petals. Is these high chroma areas against the lower chroma areas a very similar value just to give it some depth? So I'm partly still, you know, I'm still trying trying colours, and this value here of that shadow is too is too dark now. So I'm going to Lighten that shadow there. I'm just deciding what kind of brush to use. I think I'm going to use a synthetic round. This is a rosemary's brush as well. This is part of the, the botanical set, which I think was put together by, what's his name again? Michael Klein. 
Um, so this value here is too low. So it looks very grayish there, but I'm I'm betting that that's just in comparison to the higher chroma area next to it, and that actually it is raw umber and white is going to get me very close to the mix I want, and I want to bring that value up a little. So let's try bringing that up. Hey, Jasper Bean, what's happening? Oh, well, you got to bring it to me though, otherwise I don't know, do I? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, you could still have it, and I would, I would not know. Hello, big lad. You're live, beaming out across the world. <laughs> no one can see you at the moment, though, no, because the camera's on the easel. How mm. are you doing, all right? Yeah. Good. So you can have your tablet back again for a bit more screen time later. Oh, little one is awake. Ah, where's mum? Oh, dear. I can't take her out at the moment because I'm in the middle of painting. Huh? I don't know what take her out into the garden. I don't know if that's a good idea, Bean, to be honest with you, because you, you'll be on your own with her. And I think we should probably wait. Mum should be back very soon. Okay. But what you can do if you want to is go in and see her, but don't let her out. She definitely needs some attention. Okay. You can go in and say hi. The puppy is awake. Yeah, that's better. That's a better value there. These values are actually a lot closer than I would have guessed. I wonder if I can bring in some very low value. So in the shadows, I've got very transparent colors here. It's about as low as I'm going to get and still keep some chroma, so. Mostly, I guess at the moment, I'm dealing with value and chroma relationships and trying to build the form a little. And there's a bit more light coming around here. I think a bigger brush for that. So this is a, another rosemary's brush. This I do like rosemary's brushes, the synthetics for roses, for flowers. This is a half inch angled eclipse. Not quite as high value. There's the highlights on the left hand side, so I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the lower chroma. So 
So yeah, this um, this process by which which I've been talking about as a kind of a push and a pull is um, something I've been evolving a bit more lately in my own work. as a way to start bringing in a bit more, I would say, a kind of a resonance, perhaps is the best word. Almost like a kind of a, it's, you know, the very vague atmospheric parts. It's like, you know, I feel that there's, um. metaphorical aspect to light that we are aware of on some level, even if it's not explicitly stated in a painting. And um, trying very much to bring out that kind of feeling of the light. And I really like having some areas that are very vague, especially in the shadows, with more resolved lights. Um, so this painting up until now has been, how many layers has it had? I, I think I've maybe done three sessions on it so far. Um, and each, each layer has been um, sanded, a lot of sanding. various grades of sandpaper, deliberately putting texture into it. You can see some scratch marks, some scraping as well. All designed to deliberately move it away from the reference photo and to try and to start to bring in um, some possibilities. You know, I feel that it's good to, it can be good to, to make yourself step away from a, when you're working from a photo, to make yourself step away from it, to move away from it very deliberately. Um, <clears throat> and distressing the surface is a really effective way I found to do that. And it also has the advantage that it gives you a lot of texture. which really helps give the painting life. And, um, and you naturally end up with this kind of really beautiful effect of some areas being really carefully defined and, and others just almost disappearing into abstraction, which is, I think is really beautiful. effect to have in paintings. So these values are so close here. I'm pushing the values a little bit to to hopefully to bring out a little bit more kind of to make it hopefully a slightly stronger image but but still with some i hope anyway still with some subtlety to it
and I'm working in terms of the color. I'm working mostly in with relationships, you know. So if I want something, I, I know pretty much what the highest chroma is I can get at this value now. You know, I've got pretty much the extremes that I want of, of the values in as well. So you know, I know what my my range is that I can achieve, and um, I can begin to establish particular areas to be different parts of that range. I'm going to bring up the value of the this transmitted light on the inside of the rows to help that to show a little bit more. And it's the highest chroma that I can get at that value. I want that to sing out a little bit more, so I'm going to push it a little. So yeah, no, I'm not um, not keeping up with the chat at the moment. Starting to zone out a little bit. So apologies if I go a little bit quiet on it and stop talking while I'm thinking about what's going to come next. Let's try this thing here. slightly higher value you can get a nice edge with it nice hard edge so this is that silicon silicon paint chamber thingy and normally I would really soften an edge in shadow like this but I think for this particular painting it could do with a little bit something a little bit <clears throat> more defined there because I'm worried I'm kind of worried I'm concerned that there isn't enough definition in this painting and some things perhaps need to be a little bit stated a little bit more oh this is this is nice it makes a nice Yeah, I like the effect of this. You can get a nice hard edge and then it kind of skates over the surface and you get a nice kind of a texture to it. I like that, but that was a little bit too strong, so I'm gonna dab it back when it gets away from the edge. Interesting. Well, I think I'm liking that. especially going on to an oil layer like this it, it goes on with some texture i mean it's kind of hard to control but i think that's maybe not a, not such a bad thing in this case let's try using it to bring the value up of the background a little because it allows me to put on some paint you can still see the layers underneath showing through that's what i like about it i don't know how obvious that is on the screen um, things like that often don't come across quite so well, I think, uh, on a computer screen. But there's a lot of visual depth which I'm managing to kind of to keep by using this. The depth created by the multiple layers, you know, you can see that they're there.
This is interesting. I like this too. I wonder what would happen if I just took it across something. Almost like a veil. Pushing the chroma a little bit there. So I think that's too green, so I'm going to put a little bit of cad yellow in with it as well. Let me catch up with the comments, sorry. Alison says, this is going to be a silly question, but what did you mix with the white for the lightest on the rose? It's not a silly question at all. Uh, that was the bright yellow lake, the aralide yellow. I added there. Hi, Maureen. Thank you, Nancy. Those rollers are brayers. Mm. They are indeed.
Dude just says, when I said the left side, I meant the yellow on the rose. I do like the textured background so much. You probably put that comment in before I messed with the background. <laughs> it is still textured, however. <clears throat> I brought the value up a little bit. Um, you can also bring it back down. I'll have to soften all of this a little. Especially on the inside. So this is just a dry brush, very soft, <clears throat> very light pressure. Alison says, I love the contrast of it, oh, thank you. I mean, it's oh, the other thing to remember as well is that computer screens tend to add a little bit more contrast than there is. Uh, in the actual painting, um, you know, I don't know a way to stop cameras doing that. They all seem to do it. I'm sure. I'm sure that they're designed that way. You know, you can affect the gamma, which changes it a little, but it's still it's not quite the same. So the contrast in the actual painting is like slightly less, probably, than what you see on the screen. I'm liking this silicon brush thing. Hi Ray, nice to see you. Hi Sasha, good to see you. Thank you, Maury. Hello, Olaf. Ooh, lots of people turned up. It's probably because I sent the email so late. I'm sorry. Maureen says, so Paul, you only sand the backgrounds, right? No, I sanded the rows a lot. Um, and especially in the lights. I wonder if I've got something which is not as far through that I can show you. I don't think I have at the moment. So no, I would sand like the whole thing, you know, and add texture and then paint over it. So treckle, no, I don't think, where did I get this from? It doesn't actually say on it. I got it from Jackson Art, which is a place in the UK. Maureen says, I know one cannot use any solvents or extenders with the soft brayers. They eat them. Mine are probably going to be eaten, and then I'll have to get some more. <laughs> Thank you, Donanda. Thanks, Tom. I think I'm caught up. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to think about, for the painting itself, I mean, in the reference photo, the, the leaves are, of, are much stronger than I've got them in my photo, but I kind of, I think I prefer them in my painting, sorry, but I think I prefer them as they are in the painting because they are, um, you know what, this area here should just disappear into the background. Because I feel they kind of detract from the rose and um, I, I wanted to bring out the rose a lot more. Uh, and that's happened surprisingly quickly. I, I still want to bring out some of the smaller forms a little bit more. Um, but at least with what I've done today, I believe I can see where the way forward is for this. And it isn't, it isn't with more, I don't think it, it was with more texturizing and abuse of the surface. I think it's with some more careful painting to finish it off more than anything else. I think that's mostly what this painting is wanting now. Hopefully without going too far on resolving some areas so that it becomes too kind of obvious, let's say, and, um, and overstated. I like it, it where it is at the moment, I think. And I'm wondering if 
I mean, a lot of the paint has a quite a nice abstract quality to it. I'm wondering if I can um, kind of work the balance a little bit more and bring a little bit more uh, resolution of some of the small forms in whilst attempting not to lose that nice abstract quality to the paint. See, I've pushed the chroma quite a lot here, um, which I'm pretty happy with. I'm going to push it some more, push the value up, which allows me to bring in a little bit more chroma in the yellows, because the yellows hit their highest chroma at a higher value. So the higher I push the value, then the more chroma I can bring in. As long as I don't destroy the the feeling of the of it being a rose too much. There's a lot of variation in chroma, so these bits that I'm putting on now are almost neutral, really close to neutral. And then the lights over on the left hand side have a little bit more chroma in them. Oh, nice, you can put things on and then push, push it off again. See what would happen if it went a bit darker at the bottom. Mm. 
No, I don't think it needs that. So this is just ivory black and white. Um, because I want, I'm looking at this bit under here and there's a lot of kind of bleed of the rose into the background there, which I kind of like, but I also feel like it needs a little bit more defining. That bottom edge of the, of the rose, but I don't want to overstate it, but it looks like it, it, it drops chroma quite a lot there. So I wonder if, and it's, Cooler, basically, so ivory black being blue, a, a low chroma blue. I wonder if I mix just the black and white, there'll be a little bit of variation in the background as well, and I can bring that edge out just a little bit. And that mine is kind of, on the painting, it's more angular. And the actual roses, I think I like it. So, you know, decide whether to keep that a bit too strong. So the thing is about working in multiple layers like this is you can allow things to show through underneath and you can cover them and then you can you can pull back and and allow a little bit more to show back through and you you get really fine control and get a, a kind of a depth a visual depth that I, I don't think you can really get any other way and certainly it's it's I don't think you can get the same kind of effects in that alla prima. You can get different ones, of course. But I've found, for my work anyway, lately, I definitely have been moving towards working in multiple layers a lot more. And I'm finding that it's, it's giving me access to uh, my personal feeling for me the way I'm working, I feel it's giving me access to more kind of emotional depth than I could get otherwise. Um, I'm not criticizing the other prima painting at all. I'm always, always trying to be careful about, you know, the things that I say when I'm online because people get understandably, like, I guess, in a way, offended sometimes and think that you're, you're, you're trashing like a, a method of painting. So. I'm, I'm not, no. but there is something that you can get this way, building things up in layers that I don't, I personally haven't ever been able to get from a uh, single session painting. Jamie. 
Paul's my only really hello. Judith says, pardon me, please, but I see a brush stroke going from the background top through the flower middle right, or is it my imagination? No, it's not. I deliberately dragged it through. I like to have um, some areas where uh, there's a kind of a bleed, bleed, if you like, between the, the, the background and the, and the, and the foreground. So, you know, you've got to understand that what I'm not after a perfect... Something's gone wrong now. I'm not after a perfect rendition of, of, the, of the photo. I think if you can, like, try not to look at the photo and, and you know, that's kind of like a supporting thing, really, and to, and to look at the... Look at the painting in isolation from that and see whether you think the painting is working. I think it's part of the problem with working with reference photos is it's very, very easy to get into a frame of mind where you kind of think, is it like the photo? How much like the photo? This bit doesn't look like the photo. And, you, and gradually you end up with something that gets closer and closer to the photo. And you're kind of on a hiding to nothing because unless you're like, you know, you have... Anthony Wychulis levels of, of realism skill. It's never going to look that exactly like the photo anyway. And you will quite often end up just introducing more mistakes. So some of the things that I'm doing are um, done deliberately to take it away from the photo. I feel like the middle it's getting too low in value, so I want to want to bring that up without losing any chroma. This bit. is too strong. So I try to like pick out some aspects of the form from the photo that I think are going to make the painting work. And then other bits, are, I will deliberately go away from it. <laughs> I remind you of Bob Ross. I don't have the same hair. I mean, you know, it's got to be said. I, I think, actually, Bob Ross um, got to a stage where he wanted to change his hair, right? Um, but the producers wouldn't let him because it had become such a trademark. <laughs> I, I'm never going to have that problem because I don't have enough hair, basically. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, I know, Dave, but I just, you know what it's like on the internet, you know, I, I, I like to share stuff, but I, I don't want to, you know, sometimes people tend to jump to um, being offended by things a little too quickly on the internet, so I'm just a little bit, let's say, cognizant of you know, people will take what you say out of context sometimes. Sometimes deliberately, to be fair. Judith says, I struggle with looking at the photo and ignoring the photo. Yeah. Um, I would say... Um, Uh, Bob Ross was pretty good, you know. You know, he painted everything twice. He used to do. Um, he used to do a like a practice version first, and then and then um, 
and then the actual one live I'm not doing that <laughs> today no safety net I think the color is is working all right I think I'm I think I'm feeling fairly happy about the color. Just thinking about, I'm reaching that point where I'm kind of, I've changed quite a few things. So I'm sort of standing back and looking at it and wondering like which bits are working really well and which bits am I, am I not too convinced about. Um, it's that sort of standing back and looking. I mean, one thing that you don't ever really see so much um, when someone's painting online is all, you know, when, when you're not painting online is all the time that you spend like just standing and looking and trying to decide what you're gonna what you're gonna keep and what you're gonna change you know and it doesn't you know standing looking at a painting doesn't make the most compelling viewing let's be fair but it's necessary part of painting, you can't really not do it. But I'm at that stage now, so I think I'm going to have to wrap up the stream now while I stand back and have a think about what I want to do next. Because I am I think it's probably just refined some of the small forms in some areas a little more. Um, that's probably all I'm going to do with it now. Um, I'm fairly happy with what's happened today. Some areas are, I'm, uh, I, I'm starting, now I'm standing back, I'm starting to see things that I see as problems. Like drop too much chroma here. And I don't like the effect. Um, drop too much chroma here and drop the value too much. You know, small small changes that I need to make here and there to to bring the balance back and the and the life back. And I have an edge there where I don't want one. Um, <clears throat> And maybe it's become a little bit too diaphanous in places and it needs a little bit of some slightly more s solid form here and there. But I'm, I'm guardedly uh, happy with the progress. <laughs> um, but I need to wrap up now, I think, you know, partly because I need to go and check my puppies okay. And my young man. And I just feel like I'm at a stage where I want to step back from it a little bit and have a think. Bring a little bit of the form. So listen, I'm going to wrap up now. Thanks very much for coming today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> I haven't made any really earth-shattering changes to this painting, but hopefully I've, I've resolved it a little bit more. I definitely pulled it back a little bit closer to the photo, so maybe I will feel the need to, to push it away again at some point. On the upper left, you're missing a spot. Nice. <laughs> oh, dear. It needs some more yellow. Huh? Well, if it were your painting, you would be very welcome to add some more yellow in the upper left. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Funny. All right. Listen, I'm going to wrap up now. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. Won't be streaming over the weekend. Oh, just before I go, though. Um, <clears throat> so this, I mean, the, the process of the painting today was what we might call, you know, I was talking about this um, push and pull. Um, this was mostly pull, um, pulling back the painting to be um, to be closer to uh, a bit closer to to the reference, and maybe there will be there will, will definitely be more painting to do on it. Um, I'm not sure which way it will go, but I I do have a workshop coming up very soon, um, which I'm going to be teaching this approach. I'm just going to, if you want to find out a little bit more about it, there is some information here, which you can click on this link. If you would like to read a bit more about what's going on in that workshop, it starts on the 27th of November. Um, at least that's the day I have slated for the moment. Probably won't be doing flowers, but I've got some really beautiful reference to work from. Um, <clears throat> please do come along and join. Um, have a look anyway and see what you think, if you fancy it. Um, there is a 20% discount which is going to stay and um, be available until Monday the 20th. No, and it was still available on Monday, I think. Oh, I'll have to check. I think it's still available on Monday anyway. Um, <clears throat> and I will be back streaming again next week. Have a lovely weekend, everybody, and I'll see you.